This weekend, an eye-popping show ended a run in front of packed houses in Montreal. Silicone Diaries is a one-woman play that follows the transformation of transsexual Nina Arsenault. She wrote and stars in the play. In it, she explores her idea of beauty and identity. CBC's Kevin Sweet has the story. When Nina Arsenault looks in the mirror, she sees her body as a canvas. like a model or I want to be more like a Hollywood actress I might want to be like a geisha girl but this modern day pinup girl didn't always look this glamorous this is Rodney when he was five years old with a photo taken by his father you see Nina used to be Rodney as a child my instincts always just told me that I was a girl I like to play with other girls and when we would play we'd play house and I always wanted to be the little sister, not the little brother. Like, the eyes are just really huge. And the like, desire to be the little sister wasn't enough. Rodney wanted to be a girl, and above all, be as beautiful as a mannequin. Yeah. I would describe that mannequin as perfect. That her face was just perfect. She had big eyes and was just the, uh, to me, the epitome of perfect, plastic, femininity. He grew his hair out and tried cross-dressing. This, too, wasn't enough. So at 25, Rodney embarked on a journey to change his life and body forever. That journey has now been brought to life on stage by Nina herself. In its second year to sold-out audiences, she tells the story of how she endured 60 cosmetic surgeries to change her body. For the first time, audiences can not only hear the shocking and graphic details, they get to see them too. Forehead, twice, jaw twice, nose five times, cheeks twice, lips three times. A plastic surgery reality show played out on stage, provoking questions about the very painful pursuit of beauty. When the syringe goes in at first, you, oh, it only stings a bit, but when the silicone is flooding into the muscle, you can feel the muscle being stretched. Number one paradox I'm exploring is not only my enslavement to beauty, but my empowerment through beauty. Now, with the help of her body and two university degrees in theater, she's skewing the lines between life and art. We're dealing with a person here who uh, decided one day that being reasonable was not enough and that anything was possible. And I think that that is a universal mes message that goes beyond theater, beyond beauty, beyond theory. Judith Rudikoff was one of Nina's theater professors at York University. In a new book coming out next year, Rudikoff and other academics are sounding off on Nina's relevance in pop culture. We have people looking at her as a, as a supreme sacrifice. We have people looking at her as an object of beauty. We have people looking at her as a subject of beauty. Tommy Lee used to be very... I thought of the pain, the cutting, the surgery, how people will go and do this to themselves. That's what, that's what bothered me, because I thought, why are we always searching for this unknown beauty? It just made me sad to think she had to go through all that in order to feel bad about herself. But Nina doesn't want people to feel sorry for her. I think that finding yourself is not this thing that you do, like you find yourself and then you just have yourself and life is great. I think that I think of life as a hunt and that there's always a next step. That next step could be the biggest surgery of her life. You see, Nina is technically still a man, and she's not sure she wants that to change. But if it does, Nina will do what she's done before, turn it into a provocative piece of art. Kevin Sweet, CBC News, Toronto.